Hey, good morning. Hey, back here at the incredible Monarch 10 E, and specifically the 1960 to 1983 module uh, drive models, which had three vacuum tubes. And one of the really neat things about it is uh, it's single faced and you can run it on 220. And you can actually, uh, once you get one wired up, you can move it into your uh, laundry room and run it off your dryer outlet. And that's kind of unique for uh, such a sophisticated machine for its time. Or even in this time, still pretty uh, uh, sophisticated. But one of the things I want to talk about is uh, converting uh, the machine from uh, 460 volts to uh, 220. And uh, uh, it's pretty straightforward except for one part. And it's kind of scattered out through uh, the manuals and kind of hard to piece together. And I thought I would do a video on it and try to uh, simplify um, that. And uh, what, what, the, what that is, is um, the filament um, voltage uh, transformers. Now, they provide uh, 2.5 volts alternating current. You got a mix of DC and AC in these machines, but this is really a critical uh, part of uh, um, making the machine run is get that uh, uh, voltage correct to the to the two filaments, the big ones. Okay, let, let's have a look at it and get into it. And here's the machine here. This one here is a 1983, and it's the, the last year of the vacuum tubes. In 1984, um, they went with the uh, all-solid state drive. So we'll get in here. If I can get out of the way of that big door, and I got a milling machine in my spine here. <laughs> now, this box here, is um, the black box, the brain, the module. And that's, uh, I, I did a video on that. And one of, one of the things I did to the module cover, if you see, I drilled holes here where the um, adjustments are. This one here is uh, for speed compensation, and this, this one here is uh, for top speed. And the instructions uh, for uh, setting those is inside the module. <laughs> okay, let's drop this down, and uh, let me uh, get a little more light down here if I can. Just got a shadow, I think. Let's see. Yeah, I hope that works a little better. There we go. Yeah, I'll get on this side. Won't be in the shadow of that. Okay. Now, these are the filament transformers right here. And uh, I'm going to get close up to each one of them. Because there's two different brands here. Okay. Let's get over to this one here. One of these was uh, replaced. Okay. Now, um, these come in two flavors. High volt and low voltage. And uh, if you've got the high voltage ones... You have to uh, to run it on um, um, 220. You're going to have to um, put a uh, boost transformer um, between um, the feed and the transformers to boost it up. Okay. Now, one of the odd things about it is uh, these transformers got all these colored taps here. The black one's the input. And all the way down here at the bottom, I've got the brown wire to uh, the uh, filament. And that's hidden in a, in a drawing. And uh, it tells you 
If you're using, these are low voltage transformers. If you're using the low voltage, you know, putting a 220 into them, then use the brown wire. But if, uh, they're, if you're using high voltage, these are wired direct. So if you use this machine on high voltage, then you wire them in series, you loop them. Okay, and that, that's um, how you get the low voltage transformers to uh, work high voltage. But to get the high voltage transformers uh, to work on when you're running low voltage to the rest machine, you're going to have to step up the voltage to them or replace these transformers. And I don't know the availability of these transformers. You know, I found these before by going from these numbers. And uh, the manufacturer, see, that one there, uh, I can't read it very well, but one of these is a Trinco. Yeah. I think that's a Trinco. Probably upside down, but you can see um, that it's um, stated on there that it's low voltage. Okay, so if you want to run the machine on uh, 460 volts, then you loop these. Okay, right. Now, to make things even odder on this machine, you would think that this is the field tube here, and you would think that's the field tube um, um, filament transformer, but it's not. That's a reference voltage transformer for the for the module to make you know for the uh, speed control. The filament transformer for this is in the back of the machine. And uh, it's real simple, and it can be wired either way. But this is the only gotcha on the machine uh, going from high voltage uh, to low voltage. So you either replace those transformers um, or, um, or put a boost... Uh, uh, a, a boost transformer in there. And they... Uh, they don't require very much. And uh, I remember seeing one that a fellow, um, he was able to stuff the transformer um, up in the compartment here somewhere. So that's a real doable, a doable thing. And uh, there's... Uh, I got a gut instinct, and I was talking to another guy. <laughs> There's going to be quite a few more of these machines showing up. These machines are starting to show up, and uh, a lot of them are going to be in good shape, I would imagine, and, and some that are stuffed away because uh, uh, people like me and on them are getting too old. <laughs> but... Uh, I would strongly suggest uh, trying to keep these original drives working. And uh, they uh, are uh, not as hard to work on <clears throat> as, as one would think. Um, one of the things, uh, once you get to know the machine, and it seems to have a problem. It's pretty easy to chase down once you know how the machine functions, you know. So this is the electronic compartment. And it's where the module is here. And over here is the electrical compartment. So when you're uh, converting one of these, um, you will... Um, rework the transformers that are in the back of the machine. And uh, there's some uh, wires here that you have to pull these uh, covers off of. See if I can get that off, see? Those strips come off. And uh, in here's some uh, wires two wires that loop back 
to these transformers, and uh, it's called um, um, the shunts. And the length of the shunts have to be changed um, for the voltage. So that's just one of the things. Um, I uh, Once you uh, jump into one of these things, you're, you're more or less committed. But uh, it, it's not that hard to um, to work on the machine um, and keep it going. And I, I, I strongly suggest keeping the, the original drive. And the reason for that is, is um, there's no replacement drive except from Monarch that'll uh, match the performance of this. And there's no direct... Um, current replacement drive, especially solid state or any of that that can hold up. You can get that stuff to turn the spindle and stuff like that, but it's not, you're going to lose the, um, um, the function of um, efficiently cutting screw threads to high precision. You just really degrade the machine. I, I found one on eBay that uh, was just the most extreme example of really <laughs> garbage too. So, I don't know. You, you, uh, over the years, uh, there's been a lot of people that have uh, tried to replace the tubes. I understand somebody's got some tube replacements that are working for some people, but I kind of doubt if they'll really um, withstand the industrial stress, you know, of uh, like cutting uh, metric threads and, th and things like that, really making the machine perform. <laughs> so, uh, you can look and uh, some of my earlier videos on how the machine responds, you know, how it comes up to speed and how the um, uh, uh, the dynamic brake works. And that's one of the critical things here. And uh, the dynamic brake, what happens is uh, when you put it in uh, neutral or stop, <clears throat> it, uh, it throws these uh, two heavy coils uh, across the armature of the drive motor and brings it to a rapid stop. So the, uh, the energy is dissipated in, in, in here it, and converted to heat. Now, the, the later version of, of the drive was all solid state and it did away with this and push and used the pressure of the electricity coming in um, through the mains and pushed it back that's why it's called uh, regenerative I, I i guess it could make your meter uh spin backwards uh when it's breaking i don't know but uh, this is really a pretty uh easy drive to work on um, compared to um, uh, the uh, earlier version, which is still quite repairable. There's a guy here that's got a 1959, the last um, uh, model of the uh, works in a drawer, and uh, it works perfectly, has uh, the original tubes in it. Now, these, uh, these original tubes, uh, the big tubes and stuff, really hold up, you know. The thing that can really damage things is uh, bad connections in the switching, and things get sloppy, and it just seems to really stress the tubes out. So you got to keep up on it and keep, uh, like, all these switches clean and all that to, make, to, to keep the uh, machine operating like it should. And uh, once it, you know, once the machine starts hesitating and stuff, there's just some uh, real simple things to do. Make sure the the switches are clean. Another weak point is the small tube. And uh, the earlier version, the works in a drawer, used two um, um, field tubes. Had a pair, of, and, and uh, this uh, the field tube here. Uh, powers all kinds of things on the machine, so it's under a lot of stress. And uh, sometimes if your machine's wigging out or acting up, and uh, 
Yeah, this will be the culprit. And then um, there's uh, two diodes in, in the module here uh, in Rectifier 3 that uh, one of the odd things about the machine, you know, it's, it, it takes your um, alternating current from, from the mains and then converts it to direct current through uh, by rectifying it with those vacuum tubes, okay? But there's still a 60 cycle pulse in the, uh, in the direct current. And so the uh, two diodes in rectifier three, provide that missing pulse for the sensing of your speed control. <laughs> and those two diodes in Rectifier 3 get hot. They, they physically get hot when you're working the machine. So that's one thing you got to be careful of. You know, you get misinformation on the internet and stuff like that, like soldering the diodes into... Uh, the module, you don't want to do that. You know, it's not the end of the world if you did. You know, you're just going to have to cut them out of there and uh, make the diodes so you can remove them. They, they make them replaceable and removal for, for a reason. And if you're having trouble with the machine, you can test the diodes um, and, and a lot of times uh, find, the, um, find the circuit. You find the circuit. <laughs> <laughs> then you found the problem. And uh, usually you can find the circuit by just the way the machine's working and you knowing how the machine is supposed to work. So um, in the Monarch manual, uh, it, it sort of takes a partnership between the electrician and the machine operator. It says so, pretty much. And, uh, but if you buy one of these, you, you have to wear all the hats, you know. And it's not that big a deal. And uh, so I'll keep uh, doing videos on, on this um, type of machine. And uh, I'm going to do a lot of videos using the machine. And um, I just uh, uh, thought I'd point out a few things about the filament transformers. There's uh, eight transformers in the machine <laughs> and two filament transformers. Okay. So um, you guys have a, a great day, and uh, I'll load this. And uh, uh, I'm I'm not on off on vacation yet, and I have to tell you, the bad weather that I was beating didn't show up. So I'll have uh, a, a fair weather uh, on my trip, but uh, I'm not gone yet. Okay, bye bye.